Stephen, uh, we're coming to the end of another strong calendar year for Aer Lingus. Can you take us through some of the highlights? It has been a good year and uh, first and foremost we've maintained very high levels of guest satisfaction. Uh, we've seen that through our own NPS internal scoring. We've also had the validation from external bodies. We were uh, awarded uh, five star Apex uh, and we retained our four star Skytrax. And that's all underpinned the delivery of the, the value model, uh, which will see us this year generate a top line in excess of two billion euro for the first time. Uh, the rolling 12 months to the third quarter, we had operating profit well in excess of 300 million and uh, a return on capital at 28% which is the by far uh, the strongest in IAG which itself is, is a very uh, well performing uh, airline group. So we validated that which we are doing and that's allowed us uh, to secure investment for the next phase of our development. So a very positive year because we've, we've validated what we're doing and we've underpinned uh, the next phase of the Aer Lingus journey. Great. And what, what does that next phase entail? How do you see next year and the next few years planning out? Well, underpinning everything we do is our value model. Uh, and our value model is, is focused on cost, uh, product and service. And we have a, a virtuous circle at work so we're using growth to take costs out of our business and we're using uh, that cost reduction to invest in, in competitive pricing. Mm -hmm. um, so more of the same in, in, in 2019. Uh, we have the introduction of the first of our A321 LORs, which will be a very efficient aircraft for Lingus, allows us to open new gateways to North America. Uh, so we will be launching Minneapolis and Montreal the first of what I would see is a, a number of new destinations to be opened over the next 24 months. And at the same time, uh, we'll be adding more A330s into our operation uh, to build out those very successful high volume uh, gateways such as Chicago, Boston and New York. So we'll continue to invest in product, we'll continue to invest in, 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 uh, in productivity and cost. And next year, of course, we have a relaunch of the Aer Lingus brand and livery, yeah. which... Uh, the famous shamrock and the famous tone of green and... Indeed. Um, so I'm happy to confirm that uh, indeed we will retain the shamrock Good and, to hear. and there will be a certain tone of green, um, but it will be refreshed uh, to reflect the modern Aer Lingus, uh, mm -hmm. the modern Ireland in fact, mm -hmm. uh, and increasingly as we build uh, a bridge and a hub at Dublin connecting Europe to North America, we need to appeal and be relevant uh, to far more than just the Irish audience but remain absolutely uh, fundamental uh, in recognising that our heritage and our lineage, uh, we have a proud tradition of serving Ireland, a proud tradition of hospitality, we just want to bring that to new audiences and increasingly in the digital age the clarity of the, of the brand and the ability to use uh, the brand uh, across a number of media uh, really forced us into considering what we had to do. Mm. The current livery has, has um, served us very well, mm. but I think uh, people will... It's will probably tw 20, 20 years or so, It's close it? to, so we've had yeah, a yeah. significant uh, return on that particular Absolutely, investment. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure uh, it will take a little bit of getting used to because yeah. all change does, but I think yeah. uh, uh, the objective review of what we will produce in January I think uh, will be will be positive. Yeah, great. It seems a long time since 2015, which is only three, four years ago, when Aer Lingus was, was bought by IAG. That was a fraught time with significant opposition to the government's decision to sell its stake. However, it's turned out very well for Aer Lingus, turned out very well for Irish Tourism, turned out very well for, for IAG, for Ireland Inc. Um, if you cast your mind back to that period, you were, you were I think, an incoming CEO at the time. Um, it was a tricky time, but the right decision made. Right decision made and uh, fully understood the caution and the nervousness mm. from a number of stakeholders, but was always uh, convinced of the opportunity. Mm. And that's, that's really the, the, the byword. I think has always had opportunity. Mm. Uh, it's often had ambition, but it's very rarely been able to combine that ambition with opportunity. And that's what, that's what IG brought with us. Uh, so immediately 
we were able to demonstrate to IG the validity of the of the value model strategy and connecting uh, Europe and, and North America through Dublin. Mm -hmm. And with those results, what the IAG transaction allowed us to do is leverage very quickly. So that virtuous circle that I referenced earlier, that growth driving productivity, that productivity driving cost efficiency, translating into into uh, price and guest experience, we were able to get that circle moving very very early on. So I think uh, you know we have um, we look back and we've achieved everything we set out to mm. do because there was a lot of rows and discussion and, and media noise about connectivity and the Heathrow slots and stuff, but we don't hear any of that now because it nearly seems like. Uh, a passe discussion. It was always frustrating at the time because again going back to the opportunity, the opportunity to build Dublin as a gateway and a hub, the opportunity to build the, the regional airports has always been there and yet we were focused on how we could connect to somebody else's hub yes. in, in Heathrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the ambition uh, that I think we've now proven is valid. Uh, Dublin is a gateway, mm -hmm. uh, Dublin is a hub uh, and the issue of Heathrow um, Heathrow is, an, is a part of the Erlingus network, Yes. Um, but it's not fundamental to the business, nor is it fundamental to the Irish economy mm -hmm. or the tourist industry. Um, so I think we've moved on, and, and I think that's the, I think uh, that above all else is the real dividend uh, for all Irish stakeholders post-transaction. Yes, yeah. It's that we now have a vibrant Erlingus uh, and a Dublin gateway with lots of opportunity left and potential to fulfil. Yeah, and, and, and Aer Lingus's expansion and growth, and particularly your, your North American ambitions and so on, have to be enabled by, by Dublin Airport being, if you like, capable um, of, of, of facilitating that growth. What, what's your take on, the, on, on Dublin Airport at the moment? I mean, it's seen such enormous growth over a, over a relatively short period of time. Um, there's talk of a third terminal, the second runway is, is being constructed but there's still some issues at play there and um, there's a lot of investment going on. What's, what's your take as, as one of the key players within the airport, airport campus? I think like, like uh, all of us, um, we've been all surprised by the, the, the pace of, of the recovery. Uh, nevertheless, one, one plans uh, for the good times as well as the bad. Um, and we have seen a deficit in, in investment in recent years. Uh, we have been uh, cautioning that the, uh, the growth, uh, not just from Erlingus but from others, was outpacing uh, the capacity. Mm. Um, I'm delighted to say over the last 12 months, uh, with uh, Dalton at the helm of the DAA, uh, there's been a real alignment in, in recognizing the opportunity. Uh, the DAA and Erlingus have worked well traditionally together. Mm. Um, we understand we have um, at times different um, business objectives and uh, different demands but I think there's full alignment now in, in recognising the potential for our lingers to grow, the potential for other airlines to grow Dublin and the potential overall for the, for the airport uh, to continue um, the significant levels of growth that we've seen over the last uh, uh, five years. That is uh, a very powerful catalyst for the for the Irish economy and particular for Irish tourism. Mm. Um, so we're, we're encouraged by the ambition that the DAA are showing, the uh, capital investment program that they ha have uh, unveiled um, sees a South Apron development which very much meets our requirements to continue to grow our transatlantic hub and we're uh, hopeful um, that those ambitions, uh, as presented by the DAA, uh, get quickly adopted yes. and, and uh, implemented so that um, we aren't turning away any more business, that we actually have an ability to grow into our infrastructure mm. rather than catch up. Mm. Do you see a need for, for a third terminal um, at, the, at the moment? Because as you know, the department and the minister have, have, are, are currently carrying out a, an exercise to to, to look at uh, its merits or otherwise? Yeah, we, we see uh, a requirement for additional infrastructure, but in the medium term for Lingus, uh, we believe that's additional stand and uh, taxiway capacity uh, based around Terminals 1 and 2, and additional peer uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. again, based around Terminals 1 and 2. Yeah. I've no doubt at some point that Terminal 3 uh, will be uh, a positive addition to the campus, but in the immediate term, the priorities need to be delivered via the DAA's capital investment program. Absolutely, I think we'd agree with that within the Irish tourism industry. 
um, aviation, it's a fickle business, you know, um, um, there's growth can never be guaranteed, oil prices, terrorism, weak economies, there's loads of things. Of course, we have Brexit just around the corner. What do you see as the, I suppose, the biggest potential challenge that we, we'll, we'll have to sort of manage our way through in the near term uh, to ensure that we, we, we secure the growth in the medium to long term? I think the, the challenge of, of uh, the congestion we will see as a result of, of catch-up infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, that has the potential to uh, impose cost, which uh, challenges the price competitiveness and the, the, the quality of products. So if I go back to our value model of cost, products and service, all of those potentially are compromised with without ad adequate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to work very hard uh, with stakeholders and with partners in the DEA to make sure that we can continue to grow uh, because we are in a growth business, uh, air travel and uh, tourism globally is a growth business. So we may see some bumps in the road, but ultimately we, we all know uh, that uh, growth inevitably returns and I want Erlingus to be well positioned uh, to exploit all of the opportunities and to do that we need alignment and support across uh, all stakeholders and the delivery in, in particular of airport infrastructure. Absolutely and I know you've ambitions for Cork and Shannon and another regional airport but Dublin is, is the main gateway and the main if you like uh, gateway for tourism to, to Ireland as a whole so so investment in that regard is, is, is vital. Do you see Brexit as, 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 as being as, as catastrophic as, as some say in the media in terms of that, that cliff edge in March if a deal isn't done? Not for Erlingus. Uh, but I do see the risks to the Irish tourism industry mm. uh, because of our dependence on, on, uh, on UK originating uh, business. And that's why we, we see the development of the hub, the development of more connectivity both into Europe and North America from the regions and from Dublin yes. as being a hedge. Mm. It's an effective hedge. Uh, we've grown uh, inbound visitor numbers from North America significantly mm. and that's driven by air access. Yes. The ability to build a hub means that we can develop more opportunities than would otherwise be there. As we aggregate traffic flows between Europe and North America, Ireland is the beneficiary. Mm. Minneapolis will be supported not just by uh, visitors to Ireland, but by visitors to Paris and Barcelona and Rome, etc. Uh, that allows us now to have much more ambition in, in the levels of connectivity much more ambition in terms of the number of inbound tourists to Ireland mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that that offsets if not compensates for any risk that might be associated with Brexit and uh, again hoping also that, that the, the worst case in terms of Brexit doesn't, doesn't come to pass. Yeah. But the uh, commitment of Erlingus to our services to the UK is, uh, is real. Uh, we have seen no, no signs of, of uh, softening. Uh, and indeed the ability for us to flow uh, guests through Dublin to and from the UK and connecting to Canada and, and, and the US mm -hmm. gives us an ability to access again another traffic uh, uh, source which gives us the confidence that we'll be able to sustain the type and volumes of, of connectivity we have to the UK and then we'll see um, uh, you know we, we, we I think it's positive that we are beginning to to uh, become more dispersed in terms of where we where we source our traffic. Yes, that market diversification. I mean, any business needs a sort of a balanced yeah. uh, a pool of business. Yeah, and we, but obviously we have a very close relationship with, with, with Britain. Mm. Uh, it's convenient for for uh, British tourism, so we're tourists that we're at the door, on the doorstep. Um, but we have to we have yeah. to build um, we have to build alternative options, mm. uh, and in this instance. Uh, we see a, a compelling case uh, to continue to build across the North Atlantic mm -hmm. and we believe that will, will, uh, will help tourism across all of the regions because as we know North, Amer North American visitors tend to stay longer, tend to spend more and tend to visit more of the, of the island than uh, perhaps our, our, our British tourists our do. Our nearest neighbour indeed, yeah. You obviously very successfully bring visitors to Ireland from a tourism uh, co context. What do you think of the, the Irish tourism experience on the ground? Um, do you have any views as to could we be doing more, could we be doing better? Because a bit like the airline business, we in the tourism sector feel we constantly need to improve and adapt and evolve and respond to consumer yeah. needs. No, I, 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 you know, obviously 
Uh, we've built a business on the value proposition that's mm. product, cost and service. Mm. Um, so we see those as the key elements. We think we've, we've, we've got a, a, a wonderful product. Uh, Dublin is showing signs of, of, of not just the congestion, but the capacity constraints, not just in airport, but in hotel. Uh, and price competitiveness is not what it should be. Mm. Mm. Um, but we still have a lot of latent potential and capacity in, in, in the regions. Yes. And that's something that I think uh, uh, is part of our national tourist policy. Mm. Uh, and I think the, the product is excellent. Uh, I think that the type of visitors that Aer Lingus will be bringing into the country, um, that product is tailored for. Um, so I believe if we, if we keep focused on the, on the core elements, uh, manage our, our, our value proposition, uh, I believe that, that uh, Irish tourism can continue to prosper and contribute to the, to the broader economic development on the island. Great. Yeah. And of course, this is your last few weeks in your role as CEO. You've chosen to retire at the end of the year. Your replacement is a, is a Cork native, Sean Doyle, who is a senior executive, as I understand, with BA currently. You're staying on a, in a non-executive position on the Aer Lingus board. Any other plans beyond that? You, you don't look retirement age to me. No, I don't feel retirement <laughs> age either, um, uh, although there are times. Uh, no, uh, it's, I think given uh, where the business is, I think it's, it's an, an ideal time to hand over. Uh, and I'm looking forward to supporting Sean in his new role. He's a tremendous addition to the to Erlingus. Uh, so I'll be spending a little time with Erlingus uh, and Sean in the new year, uh, and looking at at uh, other opportunities. But nothing nothing yet on the table. Great. Well, listen, Stephen. On behalf of the Irish Tourism Industry, thank you for your your contribution over the last four years as CEO, but but for the years before that, working within the the Aer Lingus, if you, if you like, engine. Um, your leadership within the tourism industry and Aer Lingus has, has really helped uh, us as a sector to thrive and grow. So thank you for your time. The Aer Lingus strategy, I think, is spot on for Irish tourism. And we certainly hope you don't leave or go too far away from the aviation and tourism world. Thank you, Owen, and thank you to all in ITIC for the support over, over the, the period. It's been, it's been a great journey, and we have a long way yet to run. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.